Hello, thanks for joining me today. This is Danny, and welcome back to my Forgecraft world on the Dark Forgecraft server. Today we are going to be getting back into Nematocraft, and we're going to be doing the, th the thing... <laughs> we're going to be doing the thing that I've been very excited about in, in Nematocraft. And that is drones. We're going to start playing with some drones today. Um, so in order to do this, we of course have to make drones. <laughs> That's one of the requirements to play with drones is that we have to make some. We're going to need a printed circuit board and a couple of these turbine rotors, which is just stuff that we make in our pressure chamber. So that's pretty easy. Um, we're also going to have to make a whole bunch of these um, programming puzzle pieces. And we'll see how those work in a little bit, but basically they're all a printed circuit board surrounded by um, some plastic. And finally, well maybe not finally, but also <laughs> we're going to have to make a programmer. Um, the programmer is what we're going to use to um, program the drone. I bet you couldn't have guessed that. <laughs> and. Uh, and that's also made with turbine rotors and some plastic and a printed circuit board. So it's a lot of the same stuff. Now, one of the things I would like to do before um, we really get, before we really start getting into drones, um, you might notice that the drones um, can hold 10 bar of pressure. Our current pressure system is only capable of producing five. Yeah, max pressure five. And all of our pipes, all of our pressure tubes can only do five, um, five pressure before they blow up. <laughs> and destroy everything around them and that would kind of suck. Um, however, there are these little things that are called advanced um, pressure tubes that can actually hold up to 20 bar of pressure. And there are, of course, um, we would then also need some advanced air compressors um, that can produce more pressure. So, uh, however, um, we have this advanced air compressor, which would be really cool to make. Um, however, I don't want to make the advanced air compressor because what I do want to make um, is a, a flux, is that it? A flux compressor. Um, this guy, just just like the advanced air compressor, has a max pressure of 20 bar, um, but it uses redstone flux. So instead of having to gather a bunch of coal and dump it in our um, air compressor, this guy can pull RF um, from our um, from our existing RF generation network and generate power that way. So that way we won't have to have a special um, fuel <laughs> that we have to use for this. Um, because we are producing a ton of RF already, well maybe not a ton, but we're producing a lot of RF right now, um, from lava mostly. So, uh, and then this charging station, we can have the advanced pipes going to it, um, and then we could actually, what we can do, is we can have, um, we can have our advanced pipes, our advanced pressure tubes, r running around in the walls and have some little outlets, <laughs> I have my little, uh, hollow covers that are kind of acting as little outlets so that anytime we place something here it'll connect to the pressure tube. Um, I've got one there so that we can stick a vortex there whenever we want to start processing oil. Um, so what I would do is we would basically have two separate networks running through our walls. Um, we would have some advanced tubes and and then connecting the advanced tube network, our high pressure network basically, to our low pressure network we would have a pressure valve. Um, the pressure valve is something we haven't played with yet, but it's a pretty basic item that I can't find at the moment. <laughs> I am going to craft some of this stuff off camera. Um, I'm going to craft a flux capacitor, printed circuit board. I think this is, well, no, actually there's some new stuff in here that we haven't done yet. Um, compressed iron gear is just like any other gear. You've got the piece of iron in the middle, but you have compressed iron around it instead of whatever else. Um, advanced alloy. So this is mixed metal ingrid. Uh, 
And then the turbine rotor that we talked about, this is, we're, I'm gonna have to make a ton of these turbine rotors because we'll be using those, but they do have an exchange energy value. So I guess I really only have to make one. <laughs> Technically, I only have to make one and then we can pull the rest out of our, our um, equivalent exchange system. I, I wish I could find that pressure valve so I could show it to you. <laughs> I'm not right sure back. why I was calling it a pressure valve, <laughs> but it's called a regulator tube module. So what this guy will do, you stick it on a tube, on a pressure tube, and it will stop pressurized air from traveling through this tube when a certain pressure threshold has been reached. So, so that will allow us to have um, some pipes that have high pressure and other pipes to have low pressure and only have to have a single source of pressure. Guess what? <laughs> it's time for us to put together our first assembly thing. <laughs> because in order to make these advanced pressure tubes, we need an assembly controller um, with these machines. A platform, an IO unit, two IO units, a assembly drill, and an assembly laser. Um, really the most expensive, most of these are just printed circuit boards, which, we've, uh, which we already went through that process last time. Um, and some plastic. Compressed iron, some orange plastic, compressed iron, and then a whole bunch of these pneumatic cylinders. We actually need 18 of these pneumatic cylinders, which that's probably the most expensive part. We need 17 of these pressure gauges. Well, actually, we need 18. I think we already had one. 17 safety tubes. Yeah, we actually, we already had one pneumatic cylinder, so it's um, a bunch of levers, 108 blue plastic. Actually, I think it's more than that because we already made one. Um, 18 cannon barrels, bunch of compressed iron, bunch of pressure tubes, so all this stuff, you can see. I don't have to read it to you, right? <laughs> so that'll make us a bunch of these pneumatic cylinders. Um, so we can make our platform, except we need some orange plastic. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go collect a bunch of plastic, which also, by the way, happens to have an exchange energy value. <laughs> That's how I got all my blue plastic. And then we're also going to need this assembly controller, which is three circuit boards, compressed iron, and a pressure right, I've got myself an assembly controller, a laser, two, a drill, two IO units, and a platform. So I think that it's the controller that needs to be, yeah. So the controller takes pressure, and then all the other blocks have to be kind of touching it. So we have one IO unit, um, for input. Hmm, how do I want to arrange this? Okay, so I got rid of the UV light box and the acid in the corner because we don't need those anymore. So now we can put this guy there. It should get pressure. Hmm, why is it not getting pressure? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. It's just not showing that it's connected there, but okay, that's fine. So then we've got one IO unit, we'll put here, one there, and then we will have the platform in the middle. Oh, that's kind of in the way, I should have moved this over one, darn it. <laughs> oh no, because we need that room too. Okay, um, and we'll put our laser here I suppose. I'll put that there. Okay. So now we need a program. See, this guy, it takes a program. So we want to make our advanced pressure tubes. And we're using this recipe, which requires only one block of compressed iron for an advanced pressure tube. This recipe is a little simpler. This recipe is a little simpler, but it requires 20 pressure chamber valves. <laughs> so. A lot, it's a little bit more expensive. Well, it's a lot more expensive. So we're gonna go with the more complicated recipe, which, which is why I made the extra drill and laser. And we need this assembly program, drill and laser. And guess what? Guess what we get to play with? <laughs> what? We get to play with our Madron tablet again. <laughs> Yay, we get to order some stuff. So 14 emeralds, this is gonna cost us so we take our Imagron tablet, if you remember um, the way this thing works, grab some emeralds, um, we'll take 14 
emeralds. So out here we designated a chest as our basically our mailbox. So we, t we took our little Madron tablet and we shift right clicked on the chest with it and it made this thing our mailbox. So we stick we stick our payment in there. And then, oh, we're getting lots of power from lightning. <laughs> We've got our lightning rod up there. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, and then we take our Madron tablet, which is basically like, um, it's like Amazon.com. <laughs> we find what we want. We want our drill and laser program. We right click here. That adds it to our shopping cart. Um, is there anything else we want in the meantime, just because this is so much fun? Nope, okay. And then we click order. And then we wait for a few minutes for the mailman to come. <laughs> there he is, the mail drone. He's going to come and grab our emeralds, so now they're gone. And then he's going to go away. He's going to basically despawn in, into a poof. Snow, yuck. Um, he like poofs. We, we, we missed it because of the rain. But anyway, another one's gonna spawn. Oh, there he is. And he's gonna bring our stuff. Yay! There we have it. We're now ready to make some advanced pressure <laughs> tubes. I put this over here. I've got some pipes running up and over, or down and over, I guess. Door back together, put our program in there, and stick those in there and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I really need some speed upgrades. Wow, that's slow. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the drill. Too bad there's no sound effects. I'll add them. Okay, now this one. Just so we can compare what it's like after we uh, get our speed upgrade. Any second now. Any second. There we go. Yay. All right, I'm going to make some speed upgrades for this guy. I'm going to need some of this stuff. Oops, nope. Some of this stuff. We have one bucket of lubricant. I'm going to put our vortex up there. If you remember from last time, the lubricant is made from redstone and diesel. The hot side there of the vortex tube, so we have to place a block. Cool. There we go. We're already making. We're already making some. All right. I've got 13 so far. <laughs> it needs a bucket of lubricant. When you craft it, it gives you your bucket back. So we grab another bucket, fill it up again, and it happens to put it right in my hot bar, so that works out nicely. So we just... Oh, we're all out, okay. Should be good. Um, I wonder what the maximum. Max equals 10. So let's put 10. Now, let's see how this does. <laughs> oh, that's much better. <laughs> Look at that. It's a totally different machine now.
There. Nice. Oh, and I've got these pressure chamber valves. I may as well use those up right away. <laughs> That's so neat. It's fun to watch. Alright, we've got 24 advanced pressure tubes. I think that's going to be enough. Now this thing... This flux compressor is pretty expensive. Um, wait, no it's not. That must have been something else. Anyway, I'm going to make this flux compressor and I'll be right back. I have got... <laughs> besides a mess <laughs> on both sides of my room, I've got my flux compressor set up over here. This guy is capable of... Producing and handling pressure up to 20 bar. Um, it's got a heat sink on it. This guy produces a lot of heat. And if it exceeds its heat, I'm not sure what will happen. <laughs> I'm thinking at the very least it will lose efficiency. At the worst, it would could quite possibly blow up. I'm not sure. I'm thinking that it probably would. <laughs> and then I've got my advanced pressure tubes here. And then on this pressure tube... On this pressure tube, I have a, what is that called? That regulator thing. So um, this guy is only, only going to allow five bars of pressure to pass onto our regular pressure tubes. So we kind of have two pressure networks here. We've got a high pressure network and then we have our low pressure network. So all of our stuff that cannot go over five bar is on the low pressure network. And then I've got some high pressure over here so that our um, charging station, which can handle 20 bar, and then these guys, our vortex tubes, um, our vortex tubes that we use to heat these things up, will now be able to handle the higher pressure. Now we have one problem, and that is that our pressure gauge, um, if you remember from, I think it was the first Pneumaticraft episode, we talked about how this pressure gauge works, and it emits a signal of one per bar. I'm sorry, two per bar. So like a half a bar would be one redstone signal strength, one bar would be two, um, which means that the maximum redstone strength you can get is 15, which means that the maximum pressure that this guy can gauge, <laughs> that this guy can detect, is 7.5. But I want to bring this up to 20. Well, actually, I at least want to bring it up to 10. And we can't do that right now. Um, so I crafted myself one of these advanced PCBs. Um, I've never used one of these before, so this is the first time. But apparently, um, you right click. Uh. Oh, yes. Okay. You right click on the gauge, and then with the PCB, it turns it into an advanced thing. You can right click then um, and emit when higher than zero bar. Let's set to true. You can define the behavior in a more advanced way. Oh, okay. Nice. So then what we can do is I think we can basically offset this thing. So let's say, uh, let me think about this before I do anything because I don't want to blow up my system. signal is higher than 10 bar. So I think what that will do is not emit a redstone signal and make our system blow up. Why is it not emitting a redstone signal? Emit when higher than... Okay. Whew. That was scary. All right, so we now have 16 bar in this. That's okay. So if we want this thing to be to take our system up to let's say 17 bar. When higher than 17 bar. Okay. Um so it's not emitting a redstone signal right now because it's less than 17 bar. Why have we stopped producing pressure? Because we are hot. Okay, ooh boy, we're really hot. 
Um, I don't want this to blow up. I hope it doesn't blow up by getting hot. I have no idea if it will, but let's put a vortex on here. And... Ah, get out of <laughs> well, The vortex got hot right away. And then we can put a heat sink on the vortex, and hopefully that'll cool things off for us a little bit better. We're losing pressure. We're losing pressure because of the vortex. And we are still... Oh my gosh. So I removed um, all the upgrades but four. Um, I've got a heat sink on three sides, <laughs> including one out here. Otherwise, what happens is it gets too hot, and then it stops working. So if you keep it under 50 degrees Celsius, it will um, it'll work at 100% efficiency. But as soon as it exceeds that temperature, it goes down until it reaches this temperature, at which point it goes 0% and doesn't produce any pressure at all. But it continues to try producing pressure and keeping itself hot. <laughs> So you pretty much have to make it stop and let it cool off. So I've got it holding at 15 right now. Um, I just wanted to see how much pressure this guy could take. 10 bar. Okay. So this guy takes 10 bar of pressure and then it just stops. So I just wanted to see if it would like blow up or anything like that, but it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it does. It looks like it's safe to have more than 10 bar on the network. Um, and that's going to be the same for our drones. Um, they're going to take 10 bar maximum as well. So why don't we... Let's allow this guy to keep our network at 15 bar. So that means... I don't know why that keeps switching. So, so this should kick in again. And the temperature hovered around 45 degrees when I had four speed upgrades. If I have more than that, it gets hotter. And if I put a vortex there, <laughs> vortex, which should theoretically cool it off, um, the vortex sucks so much pressure <laughs> that it causes, makes it work harder and it actually causes it to heat up rather than cool off. So that doesn't work so well. All right, I'm going to clean up my mess here. And now, t now we're going to be able to do two things that we couldn't do before. One, um, we'll be able to make more LPG out of um, gasoline, and we'll be able to make gasoline out of kerosene, and we'll be able to make kerosene out of diesel. So none of this stuff will go to waste, or we'll all ultimately end up turning into plastic. Um, however, I think we have more than we need now, but... Uh, we just won't refine anymore. All right, our high pressure network is working great. We've got our vortex tube here and it is quite hot and it's allowing us to process our kerosene into gasoline and our gasoline into LPG. Which is good because we got, oh good, okay. Because we had a ton of extra kerosene and now, now it's gone. Okay, good. All right, and uh, <laughs> I have a secret little door over here <laughs> so that we can come over here and check on our flux compressor, which is now running at 45 degrees, which is cool. And it's actually doing a really good job of maintaining the pressure. So check this out, man. We had a whole line <laughs> of those air compressors before all the way along here this whole thing was all filled with air compressors <clears throat> now we have one <laughs> we have this one flux compressor compressor and it's maintaining a much higher air pressure um, in our lines our low pressure lines will always be at five percent all right I mean at five bar pretty much and uh, these guys it's doing a pretty good job at keeping them right at right around 18 so that is awesome So now we're ready to make our drones. Um, and what I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna end up running some pressure lines out to the um, mountaintop, <laughs> some high pressure lines, and I'll set up another one of these charging stations for the drones to use. Um, yeah, this 
this is awesome. And I don't have to stick coal in there or anything. It's pretty much self-sufficient. I never really have to never really have to think about that one, that thing anymore because it's it's totally self-sufficient. Yay! All right. Drones. 